So, those that don't know me, I'm Zach. I've just done the Flinders stretch of the Heisen Trail. And today I thought I'd show you the gear I brought with me and just a quick discussion on what all the gear is, what I think of it, and then at the end, what would I change? You know, would I get rid of some stuff or add more stuff? All of that sort of stuff. So, without further ado, well, let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is the stuff that I took with me when I left Cape Jervis, planning to do the whole thing northbound, but then decided to switch out after injuring myself and then having the time back at home recovering to rethink some things. So the first one being the pack. So this pack is the Mac Pack Fjord 40 litre, which is a really good pack. I use it a lot since buying it. It's really handy, just like super easy roll top opening which I like, makes things a little bit more water resistant so my stuff doesn't get wet. These pockets are great, but the big issue I found with it was just, it was only just big enough to fit all my stuff and then that meant that it was more weight than this pack was really designed for, but then things like these straps kind of cut into my shoulders a bit too much because there was so much pressure on just these thin straps like it dug into my hips quite a bit and just like it's not really designed for really heavy loads so I kind of overloaded it more than it was designed for and paid the price in terms of what I was feeling so I swapped it out with an old pack of mine this is the Mac, no, this is the Mountain Design Daintree 70 litre, so much bigger and also just like these shoulder straps are a bit more padded, these are way more padded which is a lot better when you got quite a bit of weight that you want going onto your hips, so you've got this nice padding there and yeah, all in all I really enjoyed this pack this top brain, really big, holds stuff I want quick access to. Um, yeah, I found it really useful for this big long hike. One thing I should mention is I've had to replace a lot of the buckles of the ears, like they've broken quite easily. But the other thing I should mention is I got this one back in the day when Mountain Designs was its own brand with its own storefront and it's since been bought out by Anaconda. So while you can get bags that look the same, I don't know if the quality is the same. But all in all, really good pack for carrying lots of stuff. And then I've just like added a whistle here because I think it's always important when you're hiking to have a whistle, some means of getting attention if you need it. Uh, next thing I'll talk about is my tent. So I, this is the Drop Xmid two-person, which I spoke a fair bit about in my video on different types of tents, and this is the one I went with. I ended up putting it in a different dry bag, one so that it'd be a little bit more waterproof more so when the tent is wet that it doesn't get everything else in my pack wet rather than the other way around but also then I found I could just compress it to a smaller size uh, really awesome tent super spacious while being tiny and pretty lightweight uh, one thing I should mention on some of the crazier windy days some of the string snap so like on all of the corners this coloured rope is repairs I've had to make and out of the six bits of string on the tent only one of them is still the original one the rest all snapped at some point or other but I was putting it in windier conditions 
than it was designed for, so that's partly on me, but just something to take note of. I've got the pegs in a separate bag, which I usually just stick at the front of my tent, and then instead of the pegs that the tent came with, which were pretty thin and lightweight, I went with these MSR Groundhog. I just found them a little bit better and more secure, and then I've got, so I just replaced all of them, including a couple of extra pegs, because I did end up snapping one, so it's always important to have spares. Yeah. Alright, the next thing I should mention is my sleeping gear, so actually getting set up once I've got the tent set up. So I've got all that in this dry bag here. Just unroll and then this one, my sleeping mat, which this one is the Nemo Astro insulated with one of my favorite typos on professional products because it's telling me that it weighs 755 kilograms, which I'm not that strong, so they've added a K in there. But yeah, insulated mat, so kept me nice and warm like blows up pretty thick. I quite enjoyed it. And yeah, all in all, it's just a really good mat. Then, we've got my sleeping bag, which, this is my winter sleeping bag, which is a brand called Outdoor Vitals, which is kind of an online only store based in the US. This is their Mummy Pod, which is also designed to work with hammocks. So when I was talking in that video on tents, that I've got a hammock. So this one, the foot end opens up so that you can thread it through the hammock. And then kind of have yourself cocooned around it, which is really good. This one, about minus... 10 degrees, but pretty warm. And then inside that, I've also got a insulated liner, which just keeps me a little bit warmer and just feels a bit nicer against the skin than just the sleeping bag. As well as meaning that I don't need to wash the sleeping bag as often, because it doesn't get gross and disgusting. And this, you just chuck in the washing machine and you're good to go. I also really want to talk about this dry bag because it's actually one of my favorite bits of gear. So, it's a dry bag. You may have noticed a weird nozzle sticking out. That's because I pull it inside out. And then on one side is really nice, kind of soft material so that then at night I can stick my clothes in there and that's a pillow but also being that it's Nemo the same brand as my sleeping mat this connects into the sleeping mat and then basically you just fill it with air and pump all of that air into the bag which saves me using my breath at the end of the day it takes a while this bag's really one of those jack of all trades that there's a slightly better version of each individual thing. So the fact that it does all three means, yeah, I just really love it. It's one of my favorite bits of gear to take with me hiking. And then with that, all in that bag means I've got my sleeping mat, my sleeping bag, and a pillow all rolled into that easy package. And now, Let's talk about clothing. So, this is a bag that has all my clothes. It did generally pack down even smaller than this because, you know, I'd be wearing some of it. I didn't hike naked. So, open that up. This is a compression dry sack, so it's waterproof, unless you're like dunking it in a pool but still got those compression straps so that you can get it nice and tight pulled down, gets a nice small size. And we just 
open that one up. And we've got a belt. This one's just a bit stretchy, but the main thing is it's just really flat, which is super helpful if you then got to have a bag strapped over the top of it as well. Anything with a thick buckle tends to just press in, which gets really uncomfortable. Then, got underwear. I brought the three pairs of underwear, which I had changed through. I've got two sets of woolen underwear, 100% merino, which just breathes really nicely and just feels really good and also doesn't stink and get disgusting when you wear it for multiple days in a row, which is what you really need. And then I've also got these ones I just got from Coles. They're like nice, weird, lycra type material. But they've also got venting all the way down, which just feels good. You don't want chafing. If you're going to be hiking every day for a long period of time, the last thing you want is chafing. So make sure your undies are good ones. Then socks. I had three pairs of socks which worked out to basically be two pairs of socks, which I'll explain in a sec. So these nice woolen ones, Smart Wool is the brand I used as my bed socks. So I made sure never to go hiking in them so that these didn't get all sweaty and gross. These were my nice warm bed socks. Then what I did with these is these are sock liners basically. So these ones are actually toe socks, which I found just help stop blisters and just feels like kind of a second layer, makes my feet feel a bit nicer and better. Really breathable, lightweight. And then I've got the Jinjinji socks. I did for a while, the first week or two, going northbound the first week and then a couple of days coming back had the toe socks of these and didn't use those but then I started getting blisters and I just found that this mat worked a bit better for me which works weird I'll talk about shoes seeing as we're on the topic I have the Scarpa I've forgotten exactly which model but these are really good boots I did find, just because I have wide feet, that's why I was getting a few blisters like on my little toe. But all in all, like, these survived really well, went through all the punishment. And then I also have these super lightweight shoes, which are the Vibram Furoshiki. So basically, just got a little bit in there. And these were my camp shoes, which is really good if you need to get up in the middle of the night to go pee, and you don't want to put on your heavy boots, or at the end of the day you just want to like let your feet spread out a bit more. These were perfect. Then we've got nice lightweight down jackets. This one's from Kathmandu. Uh, yeah. Lightweight, keeps me warm, not much more to say about that. Then I've got some merino thermals, amazing to change into at the end of a long day, especially given that I was hiking in winter, these just made it awesome. Um, both merino wool held up really well, kept me warm, again, not much more to say. Then I had this shirt, which I'd occasionally hike with, but these were more like once I got into town, a shirt that felt a bit nicer. And also this is kind of a wool and synthetic blend, so it kept me warm. So I'd opt that this would more be when I get to the tent, then I can get rid of this shirt, which is a really good shirt, but obviously this would get sweaty and get changed into this. Feels like a new set of clothes. Feels amazing. Uh, 
this shirt. Really good. You can see it's kind of got like venting on the shoulders there. And it didn't really ever get warm enough that I rolled the sleeves up, but it does have the possibility to like keep them in place if you want them rolled up. And just really lightweight hugging shirt. Again, works really well. Not much more to say. Then trousers. So the hiking pants that I mostly hike with are these ones, which is the Cool Destroyer. Hopefully you can read that, which as well as just being a crazy name, is these are really good. Like they're quite abrasion resistant material. The only time I've ever managed to get a slight rip in it was here, which I got from a bicycle chain as I was pedaling the bike, kind of got caught in. But apart from that, like these have been well and truly off track bush bashing with me through twigs and spiky bushes and everything. And they've held up really well for the past, oh, I want to say three years, three or even four years. So yeah, these are kind of my go-to hiking pants for everything. Cool, really good brand in general. Uh, and then I've got these Mac Pack pants, which are just nice, lightweight, slightly stretchy, but like have a bit of extra at the knees and it's still abrasion resistant. And yeah, just having two sets of pants meant that like when I was in a caravan park and was able to wash my clothes, I was able to still be wearing a pair of pants while washing the ones I mainly go hiking in and just looks a bit neater when you get into town and you get trying to go into a cafe or shops and all of that sort of stuff. It's nice to have something that isn't entirely disgusting. And that's all of my clothes. So yeah, just basically two changes of clothes. Clothes I hiked in, clothes I tented in, and oh, got to mention the jumpers. So this vest, I did start off with this Katmandu synthetic vest, which I really like, but it's getting, oh, I want to say eight, nine years old, and so it's getting very thin. You can see it starting to rip, so then I decided to buy a new one from Mac Pack, and yeah, nothing bad to say about this vest. Kept me really good for like keeping my core warm, so I'd almost always be hiking with the shirt and the vest, and then kind of spend the morning with the jumper on, then take the jumper off, but still keep the vest on as it just kind of keeps that core warmth and core body temperature regulated really well. And then for the jumper, I've got another map pack. This is another one that's a wool and synthetic blend. So this one's, I think, like 40% wool or something. And yeah, really good, nice and stretchy, really comfortable fit for me and kept me warm. So, yeah. Then, next thing after talking about general clothing is my rain gear. So I've got the cool rain jacket. I think this one's called the Project, which quite lightweight, really good at just stuffing into my bag. I, my general method is I just keep hold of one sleeve, stuff everything else in around so that it doesn't really take space, and then you can just pull it out once it's wet. Um, this material is actually slightly stretchy, has a little bit of give, which for a rain jacket is amazing, and yeah, kept me really warm when it was windy, good wind protection, and kept me dry when it was wet. So I did everything I want from a rain jacket. 
Then I've got some North Face rain pants. These ones, nice bit of stretch and elastic so you can pull them up no matter like width what you're wearing. And the other really helpful feature is just how much the zips open up, which means that you can put it on over your boots without having to take off your boots or without having to really tug. Just open it up enough. And then it does that. And then at the bottom, it's got a couple of different position clips. It's got extra abrasion resistance in the middle so that when you're rubbing against itself, it doesn't wear out all the waterproofing. And again, just like does what it's supposed to, kept me dry. And yeah, no real complaints. They work really well. Food, water, and cooking is up next. So I'm going to start with food bag. Um, just open that one up. So I had all of my dinners pre-planned and pre-organized with drops at a couple of towns along the way and the two so I had freeze-dried meals which means you just pour boiling water in leave it for five to ten minutes and then you've got your meal the two brands I went with a campers pantry and radix so you can see the branding is very different radix really kind of brands itself as very scientifically based and you know works out in the lab exactly how much nutrients you need and how much energy you need for what you're doing all that sort of stuff and then campers pantry is based out of tasmania and is really more of like really good food that you can have anywhere for a lightweight which is what both of them do but this one kind of brands itself more on the ingredients being good and all that sort of stuff uh, both of them tasted really good I did have a friend who very helpfully mentioned that she had found that the vegetarian campers pantry meals didn't quite have as much energy as she needed for a big trip she was doing so I made sure to kind of for the vegetarian meals bulk it out with usually some couscous that's super lightweight and easy to cook just something to keep in mind then had snacks which for snacks I just get that in towns along the way basically anything except for my dinner I just buy in towns along the way so it would just completely depend on what was at the shop generally something with nuts is really good because that kind of keeps you fueled for a while um, I did buy a few packs of freeze-dried fruit which is amazing really interesting texture and just slots in all of the flavor so this is just strawberry nothing else added just strawberry and tastes like a really sweet strawberry I for lunch I'd either have crackers or have wraps and then often I'd put tuna in them until I got bigger tuna and then like if you could get a nice hard cheese I found that it was cold enough that it didn't melt and go gross on me so I had that quite a few times and then my breakfast would usually be some sort of oat slice just because in the morning I'm the sort of person who likes to just eat something, deal with the wrapper, no clean up, pack up my stuff and go and then I can have more substantial snacks in the morning as I go if I need to. So that I tend to found, find was the way to go. This bag I want to talk about real quick because I really like it. It was a Christmas present from my sister. So, it's got a valve on it, which is just super handy. After you've closed it, you can close down any last bits of air so that it compresses down as small as it gets. And then, <coughs> excuse me, what it's designed for 
is to be used to clean your laundry, basically. So at the back, it's got kind of this real bumpy texture. So then you stick your sock and your shirt or whatever else into it, add a little bit of soap, add the water, close it up, rub it around a lot, tip it all out, do the same with just some clear, clean water, rub it around, and then you've got clean clothes out on the trail. I have only used it a couple times, but when I have, it's been super appreciated to have that ability to actually get my socks clean after, you know, using the same pair of socks for 10 or more days without washing them. They start to stink up the tent and everything else. That one. Then for cooking, I had jet boil, which works really well for boiling water. So the design there kind of traps in the heat, keeps it waterproof. So inside is everything you need. I can, I use the little gas bottle. If you've got the little one, then everything fits in together, kind of. This is just an 800 mil, but if you get the bigger size, the actual one liter or 1.5 liter jet boils, everything will fit inside. So then, got a little pot stand. in and that just keeps it a bit more stable and then your burner this you just screw on and you can hear that sound when it's working gas going then once you've got that that down, it does have a little igniter of its own, then once that's going, this locks and twists into place, so that it holds in place and is really stable, and it boils water quite quickly, so I use that, which is really good, then once I've got that poured in, I just made sure I had a nice long handled spoon. Because that way, I don't have to rip this bag in half. I can still reach down and eat everything. And the reason I don't want to rip these bags in half is this turned out, the camper's pantry ones in particular, turned out to be a perfect size for my rubbish bin for the rest of the week. So generally, I could fit a week's worth of rubbish just into this bag. And it's got a zip lock, so everything seals up. So just one of those for dinner and then I've got my rubbish bag sorted as well then in here I've got a bit of a clean up kit so in there I've got like a scrubber and a cloth which because I was only boiling water I didn't need that much but it was useful to have I also then it's got a little chopping board which is useful when you're having cheese and crackers or something fancy for lunch and this is my little lighter so this one spreads out and the other cool thing is this one has a little attachment for the gas bottle and refills straight from one of these so I'm never worried that I'm about to run out of fuel for that then here, this is my Life Straw Flex. So this was my water filter. And basically, you just unscrew that. This is the filter itself. Fill this with water. Screw that in. And then you just squeeze all of that over your water bottle. Squeeze it all through. Oh, there's a little bit of water in there, into your water bottle. So for water storage, I had just one one litre Nalgene. This one's been through a fair bit. It's got a few fun stickers on it. 
and then I've got the MSR 10 litre dromedary. Now, I never got even half full with this. There's no way I needed 10 litres, but the outside is nice and abrasion resistant, so I was never worried about dropping it or leaving it on the dirt. And I just have kind of about three litres in here was what I'd do most days. If I was going for a really long day that I knew I'd be drinking a lot, I'd maybe go to four litres. And my method for doing that was I would filter into this so that I could measure it exactly one litre at a time into the bottle. And then got a nice tube which sticks through the pack and then just clips onto the pack itself so that as I'm hiking I can just take a quick sip of water which works really well for me. So that food and water pretty well explained. I didn't have any issues or anything I'd do differently with food. I quite enjoyed all my food on the trip. Alright so here is my camera stuff. So just here's my tripod which worked really well. Here's my camera, which goes into several bits. This is my little selfie stick. And there's my microphone. And not much else to say. So you can see here is the camera itself. And this is just how it all falls apart. So that you can change which direction you want the screen on. This is the normal camera, not the 360 lens. And then that red bit's just the battery, which just clicks into place. And now I'm just grabbing the case for it all, which then has a few extra bits and pieces that I can attach it to the selfie stick or the tripod. And also I can attach the microphone to it, which worked really well for me. All right, now we're just getting into smaller stuff talk about my electronics. First one is I did bring this solar panel which I was able to clip just to the outside of my pack. So it, the solar panel came with these little carabiners that I just added in. So that clipped on and it would just hang from the pack. I didn't have that many sunny days. And when I did, they were usually right after I'd been to town. So I didn't actually get that much use out of the solar panel, which is why you don't really see it very often in the video. But it works. It was useful. Um, then this bag is all of my electronics with a couple of warm items just for added padding between everything. So I've got my beanie, which is a buff. So I used it as a beanie the whole time. This one's wool, but the whole thing is one long tube. So, you know, you can have it over the neck or have it as more of a balaclava. Uh, very useful. Then also had another buff. This one's not wool, not very warm, but is useful just for a bit of sun protection. And also I would didn't do it as much on the hike because I usually had long sleeves over everything. But I will often, if I'm if it's warmer, will have it over my the word my watch. And that just helps stop it from being scratched as I walk past things. So I didn't use it that much this trip, but I have used it a fair bit. Uh, my wallet, always good to have. Then I've got gloves. So these ones, super lightweight. I don't often use gloves that much, so I didn't bother with heavy gloves. These are just fingerless alpaca wool gloves 
really cool. And much warmer than you'd think for how light they are. Then in here also had a little repair kit, tent repair kit, which mainly just had like a few needle and thread, a couple of different patches, and then just some seam sealer glue. It also had the little attachment I was mentioning for my lighter that this screws into the gas bottle and then refills my lighter. Which, luckily, I didn't really need to use this that much. Then I had a pair of wireless earphones. These are the Panasonic ones that belong with the case that my microphone was in. So I've now lost amongst all of the stuff I keep chucking around. But don't worry. Then I had my torch. So I've got a black diamond. This one's the Revolt. So it does red, really good light adjustment, which was amazing because it meant that my battery lasted quite well. Because when it's just me and there's nothing else kind of blocking your night vision, you can have your torch down really low, which saves your battery life. This one comes with its own rechargeable battery that you then just charge as per normal, but will also take just three AAA batteries, which is very handy to have it so that you can swap it out if you need to really quickly and easily. Then I've got all the different cords I need, a little charger for when I am in town, which I made sure I have one that's got two sockets because then it makes it a lot easier because you're only there for one night and you don't want to spend the whole time as soon as one thing's charged you don't want to have to be awake and alert to swap everything out then I've got my Signet 10,000 milliamp hour battery so that means that I can charge all my stuff on the trail and then these are three spare batteries for the head torch so that if I did run out while in the middle of nowhere I'm not going to be left in the dark the whole time and that everything that was in there so that's my electronics the other thing I'll mention on electronics is this bivy stick so this is a satellite communication device so with this I was able to text some people and let them know I was safe so every day at lunchtime and once I'd gotten into camp and was having dinner I could just connect this to my phone through Bluetooth and then when I'm not in any sort of cell reception range this thing will still work on the device itself it's got the on button it's got a little tick so I can send a pre-recorded message so if I was safe and didn't want to get out my phone or my phone was dead or whatever you can just click that button it'll automatically send a message that you pre-organized and then the other very useful thing if you're going on long hikes is it's got an SOS function so you open up that flap and then if I hold in that button for three seconds or more it'll automatically send out an SOS that will alert emergency services that I'm in trouble and then if I am connected to my phone as well I can actually text through details so that emergency services can get some idea of what sort of res rescue they need to do but even if I don't have my phone that'll alert somebody to my location and that I'm in trouble which is always a really good thing to have if you know you're going to spend a bunch of time without cell service out in the middle of nowhere have some way whether it's a PLB or one of these or one of the other brands to let people know that you're in trouble next thing I want to mention is the ground sheet so this orange sheet 
is also silver on one side. This is by a brand called Soul or Survive Outdoors Longer. So this one is designed, you can use it. I used it underneath the tent just to keep the, the thin floor a bit more protected on rocky and like potentially sharp ground. But it also can be used as like one of those emergency space blankets sort of thing. It's got little holes in the end so that you can even set it up as an emergency tarp shelter. Just kind of string it up, keep yourself protected from the elements. And yeah, as far as ground sheet, this is a very heavy way to go. Lots of people try to find the thinnest, lightest thing. But I really like how strong it is and that it has all these other functions. And the other thing is just being that it's bright orange means it's really good in an emergency situation if there are search and rescue happening. You can see bright orange really well in a forest while coming overhead. So if I had gotten into really bad trouble where I'd had to use the bivy stick and set off that emergency message, I also would have draped this somewhere so that I've got a nice bright orange target instead of this little person that they're looking for. And yeah, works really well. Hasn't been damaged at all and it spent most of the time on the outside of my pack and I wasn't particularly careful with it. So that's a good sign. I want to quickly mention my hat. Couldn't find a good spot at which to talk about the hat. This one is the brand Sunday Afternoon and it's pretty waterproof so usually this by itself like I didn't even have the hood over my hat that often even when it was raining because this is nice broad brim keeps me protected everywhere um, really the hood was just best when it was windy enough that I was worried this was gonna come off the other thing this has is a nice pocket so I keep a handkerchief in there just because it's always good to have some sort of absorbent thing and then I would also keep a little bit of money in there so that if I'd forgotten to make sure that my wallet was accessible when I get into town and get to a caravan park or whatever I've still got some cash with me so that I don't have to awkwardly unpack my whole bag in the middle of a supermarket so yeah this hat really useful and yeah, now we're just on to little bits and pieces. Um, towel, really small, lightweight, really good. A couple of occasions where I did get to have a shower and also good at like occasionally I'd wipe down my tent with it or just other stuff that got really wet. In here is just my toothbrush and toothpaste. If I actually decided to put more effort into it it would have probably been a good idea to just take what I need of the toothpaste instead of a whole new full thing then I've also got some pseudocrem which is it specifically talks about nappy rash which makes it sound really embarrassing but basically, it's really good if you've got chafing. And luckily, I didn't have to deal with chafing that much this trip, but I have in the past, so I always have something that can help deal with it really quickly. Because again, if you're going to be walking 30 k's a day, you don't want chafing. So that sucks. Um, this is my first aid kit. I could have gotten away with it being smaller, but just with... My training and everything in the back of my head, I made sure that I had a triangular bandage and a snake bandage and several things like lots of band-aids and all sorts of stuff. But for you going on a trip, just figure out what you'll need. I generally say snake bandage, like compression bandage, and some band-aids is kind of the minimum. After Cape Jervis and twisting my ankle so badly, I also made sure to have a compression sleeve for my ankle which ironically enough 
I only used this on the opposite one to what I injured the first time because that started playing up for the last few days of the trip. And then I also made sure to have tape so I could strap stuff. So there's first aid kit. Um, sunscreen. Again, I only needed like a quarter of this. So would have been useful to just decant this into something smaller but you never know I figured splinters it could be really sunny toilet paper always have toilet paper with you and it's still packed away but make sure you've got a little shovel I just got one from Bunnings you can get like lightweight hikers ones but I find they tend to snap in really rocky ground which the splinters is so I just made sure I had a nice metal one just from Bunnings, nice and cheap, no problem. Uh, knife, so I've got a Gerber multi-tool, I think this one's called the center drive, but just real easy to use. Um, I know some people that just have a super lightweight, just a knife. I use this one at work a lot, so I like to have a multi-tool. Then you never know when something will happen that you just want one of the other tools on it. Um. <coughs> Sorry. Compass. Even though, like, I've got a compass on my watch and my phone GPS is really good, I think it's really important to have a compass and a physical map and know how to use them together because then you're not reliant on GPS or battery or any of that stuff. So then I've got a nice waterproof sleeve for my map. This has got quite a few of the maps. I tried to make sure I could get rid of a map as soon as I didn't need it anymore. The Heisen Trail maps are really useful. They've got lots of useful stuff like the elevation and just fun information about everything and lots of pictures. So that was really cool. Then the other thing in here, uh, pen and markers, is I've got a little Gideon New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. Which for me personally, that's one thing I always take with me just before I go to bed, read a little bit of that. But some people have different books or all sorts of things. Then this is a bit tangled, but string, because again, you never know when you need more string, like I did to repair the tent. And then I've also got these straps, so these are just quick buckles. So I actually use these instead of the tripod a number of times that just be one of the trail markers and you just wrap this around the camera pull it tight and I think that's basically it that I need to talk about so all in all depending on how much food and water I had I was generally sitting at kind of between 17 18 kilos and then like 21 kilos which is on the heavier end but not crazy heavy end of things um yeah all right so now that i've gone through everything the question is what would i change and is there anything i regret or wish i'd done differently um the first most obvious thing is the solar panel just because I didn't really use it that often, it's extra weight, and generally I was out of town often enough, and I had a big enough power bank that I didn't need that, so that could go. The other thing is the tripod. I did use it a few times, but not often, and usually there were alternatives. There was something I could tie the camera to, because I've got a little selfie stick that I could hold up and yeah just for being 
1.3 kilos off the top of my head, I think that's what it was, that I could get rid of without that much delay. I'd probably do that. Didn't really need the tripod. And then camera gear in general, it's one of those things that, you know, if I was doing the trip by myself, I probably wouldn't have even half of the camera gear because I'd try to keep it as light as possible. But I really wanted to do vlogging and keep you guys updated. So, like, for what it was, it's actually pretty small and doesn't take up much space. But it all fits into this little case, which isn't that heavy. So, yeah. Other than that, it's just little things. Like, I could have cut down on the amount of toothpaste or sunscreen that I brought. I could have, like, cut off a bit of my toothbrush. And, like, there's always going to be, I could have gotten a lighter weight, more expensive version of pretty much any of the gear. You can always find something even lighter weight. But in terms of big changes that I'd make to adjust the weight for comfort, I was pretty comfortable on the trip. So I don't really regret any of the stuff I brought, but it's probably just the solar panel and the tripod that I'd take out and be fine without. And everything else just worked really well for me. So this is the video. Uh, hopefully you found it helpful and informative. One thing I would like to add, just as general advice for anyone planning on doing a longer hike or something similar, is make sure you know your gear well enough to be able to use it because the last thing you want to do if you're already tired and the weather's bad is then have to figure out how to use this thing you've been carrying with you the whole way so I'm a big fan of kind of practice run set things up in your backyard do a short hike with the pack fully weighted just as a day hike to be like oh this is what it feels like with this much weight all that sort of stuff the other thing I really want to mention is my fundraiser for Hope Street. So that's going to stay up. People can keep donating up until August 14th, so not too far away. And then at that point, I'm going to jump online and get tents and hopefully, depending on how much money, get some sleeping mats as well, potentially some sleeping bags if I manage to get that much money raised but we shall see so if any of this has inspired you and you really like to contribute to being able to give teenagers and young people the ability to go outdoors and have adventures and experiences of their own then please follow the link that I've got in the description below to check out the fundraiser and any amount you're willing to give would be greatly appreciated. Apart from that, this is me signing off.